Hello and a very warm welcome to Rajya Sabha Television. This is COVID-19 India Fights Back. I'm Frank Rausen Pereira. The third wave of COVID-19 in Delhi is worse than the first two instances of a major spike in cases in June and September, Balram Bhargava, Director General Indian Council for Medical Research said. Now, high pollution levels, dipping temperature, festive crowds and the wedding season, besides increased interstate movement from and to Delhi NCR, were leading factors triggering the surge in cases, he added. When asked whether Delhi has reached the stage of community transmission and if cases would increase during the festivals, Health Secretary Rajesh Bhushan said at the time of festivals or marriages when people gather and do not follow COVID-19 appropriate behaviour, there are chances of the spread of the infection. Delhi seems to have hit the peak of its third COVID-19 wave, Delhi Health Minister Satyendra Jain said, indicating the number of infections is likely to come down soon. In this edition of India Fights Back, we will analyze the third wave of COVID-19 in Delhi. Joining me on the program today are Dr. B. L. Sherwal, Director Rajiv Gandhi Super Speciality Hospital, New Delhi, and Dr. Rajiv Das Gupta, Chairperson, Center of Social Medicine and Community Health, JNU. Thank you to my guests for joining me on this edition of COVID-19 India Fights Back. All right, Dr. Sherwal, let me begin the program with you first. Let's first try and understand and analyze this third wave of COVID-19 in Delhi and why does it seem to be far more severe than the previous two waves? Yeah, thank you. Uh, uh, what we are seeing since last, uh, you know, one week, uh, number of uh, admissions in uh, hospital in the uh, Delhi uh, across uh, you know private and the government hospital has really increased and among that uh, you know critical care patients are uh, uh, more and more so uh, you know aged and uh, comorbid patients uh, are uh, there so because of that uh, you know we are seeing uh, you know mortality uh, is also very high as compared to the earlier uh, wave and uh, there is even, uh, you know, uh, demand for uh, more number of beds in the ICUs and SDU. And uh, most of the uh, Delhi government hospital is running almost full. And uh, we are really, uh, you know, trying our best to uh, meet the demand of uh, the uh, people uh, in Delhi. But we are hopeful that, as Honorable Minister has said, uh, that uh, this should be uh, under control after uh, a week or so as, as, as the festival season and uh, because of the lockdown opening and uh, because of the marriages, all the reasons are known to uh, all of us. But at the same time, uh, we have become little casual and we have become, you know, more uh, overconfident, I think I would say. So uh, that is the basic reason that now more and more number of cases it is spreading uh, almost you will hear from your near and dear that somebody or the other is uh, uh, COVID positive in the nearby. So uh, ultimately, uh, you know, uh, it is reaching to the uh, uh, each and every house and uh, most of the people are uh, falling sick and they are needing the admission in the hospital. Absolutely. All right. So, Dr. Das, let, let, let me take the discussion forward with you now. You know, as far as uh, the number of cases are concerned, of course, we are in the midst of the festive season. We had Dasara. Clearly, people are going out, meeting people. Lockdowns are lifted. People are trying to, you know, get on with their normal lives as well. And that is definitely one of the reasons why the, the you know, the transmission seemed to be going up and why we have seen a third wave. But let's not forget the change in weather. And also the foul air, clearly those as those two factors also have a big role to play. Dr. Das Gupta. Well, I think uh, the lesson we ought not to forget is actually from the epidemic curve of the USA. Uh, though its levels are certainly a lot higher than India, or at least reported in India, the USA has seen two further and higher peaks than the, than the first one, uh, when one initially thought that it's over the hump, that it's, it's uh, reached its peak. 
but it's only proven that as the unlock phase begins and expands and economic activity uh, expands, more and more people will continue to spread. And, and that's but natural because the lockdown phase is not really meant to lead to an end of the epidemic or the pandemic, but really to prepare the health service system for the number of cases that we are actually witnessing. So on one hand, there's uh, nothing to feel that the worst is over because we don't even know uh, how much worse it's to come. And particularly as we are seeing the evidence both in Europe and the USA. But remember in USA, these two peaks came actually before the flu season began. So that actually happened uh, in, in some of the best uh, case scenario, or, or at least the best weather uh, of the year. And uh, while we have our festive season now, uh, worse is actually yet to come. And as, as we are discussing, both uh, the pollution level as well as the winter season ahead, when a lot more people will be indoors, is certainly going to be a big challenge. Absolutely. Challenges, uh, you know, abound really as far as the future are concerned. And talking about these challenges, Dr. Sherwal, uh, and seeing the number of spike in cases over the last uh, few days, are the hospitals as well as the authorities ready to take on the challenge? Dr. Sherwal, if you can hear me. Yeah. Uh, most of the hospital has been uh, directed to increase their uh, bed capacity uh, in their hospital and uh, also in the private and both in the government also. So, uh, and more so uh, the critical care beds uh, 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 when the uh, uh, first peak came and uh, second peak was there. So, uh, we have really prepared ourselves like uh, I can tell you uh, in my hospital there are uh, uh, around 400 beds which are uh, meant for uh, critical care patients. Uh, so 200 ICU and 200 SDU uh, uh, beds. And likewise, in most of the Delhi government hospital, we uh, have uh, uh, the sufficient number of beds. But at the same time, when the number of cases is uh, rising, and as uh, Dr. Das Gupta has said, uh, if it goes like this, then definitely any number of beds is going to be a challenge. So we really need to uh, you know, augment it and uh, maybe more beds uh, will be needed. And that is why uh, Honorable uh, Health Minister and Honorable CM of Delhi has already written to uh, you know, Central uh, Health Ministry uh, to support as well as the number of beds in the Central uh, Hospital. Uh, that is uh, RML, Sardajan, AIMS, LHMG. So that will be uh, if uh, the number of beds can be earmarked for COVID in those uh, larger hospitals, it will be, uh, and I, I'm, I'm thinking that, you know, uh, those beds will be required. They are, these are really, you know, uh, very, very, you know, large number of uh, cases if increased. So their uh, beds will be required for admission of the COVID patients. So uh, I think uh, as far as infrastructure is concerned, uh, luckily, we had a time to augment the, uh, you know, uh, bed capacity to have the equipment and to get the uh, manpower uh, trained for that. But still, as uh, I'm really afraid, as uh, um, as a doctor, actually, we know that as uh, Dr. Gupta has, Dr. Gupta has just said, that we really don't know whether it is the uh, third or whether it is the last peak. So, uh, was is going to, you know, come in the near future or maybe uh, later on. So that is nobody knows. So we have to get ready for the worst actually. So uh, any any augmentation uh, after doing uh, once, then in adding on that, and even uh, we have to work it again if more beds or more critical beds will be required. So uh, intermittently again, we have to work on it. Absolutely. All right. So Dr. Das Gupta, how do we prepare for the worst when we don't know what the worst is? Because we've seen that in different places around the world, you know, the virus has behaved differently. Take for India itself, you know, the death rate is below 1.5%. We seem to have managed it 
decently well and fairly well. So how do we prepare for the worst and what's the worst really? Well, no one honestly knows what the worst is. Uh, one thing that's been uh, fairly abundant uh, in the experience of this pandemic is the alternative scenarios that modelers have, disease modeling has, uh, you know, made available. Uh, and, and various models are continuously trying to assess this in a dynamic fashion. The, the Delhi government's own expert committee has also been uh, making these uh, computations. They are currently estimating about 15,000 uh, cases, which is the requirement. Dr. Sherwal is, uh, is far more, you know, uh, key to it. Uh, the question really is, uh, now that we have had uh, nearly eight to nine months of warning, uh, and, and the fact is that India did respond pretty early in mid-January through its various advisories, technical guidelines, and so on. States such as Kerala, Delhi, which were expecting a much larger number of international traffic, including returnees from the then more affected countries, certainly started preparing, as we know. Uh, all, all private and public sector uh, institutions, to varying degrees, of course, according to their capacities, joined in this effort. Uh, the armed forces joined in this effort. In fact, the very first quarantines centers for the Wuhan returnees were actually put out by the armed forces. So there hasn't been uh, any dearth of preparedness at the early stages. However, I think what's of concern is, and Dr. Sherwal is someone who can actually throw more light on this, is the Delhi government actually approaching the uh, Honorable High Court of Delhi uh, for asking for more beds in the private sector, asking for certain uh, certain uh, financial and economic uh, packages in terms of charges, uh, capping the charges and so on. So it's it's not just a question of capacity in sheer numbers, but is there a capacity in terms of the government paying or the government making it free, or is it the, 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 the patients or the people who will have to pay? So it's not just sheer numbers, but also this whole uh, gamut of uh, factors that will ultimately determine whether right. the care is available in an equitous manner or not. The short point is that it's not just sheer numbers, but the manner in which care is actually made available to the most vulnerable, uh, whether it's the elderly, whether it's uh, the more marginalized in terms of socioeconomics, uh, let's say the disabled, uh, the frontline workers in the entire gamut of non-health sectors. So th those who are actually falling ill, uh, there have even been deaths, and uh, those are not uh, sufficiently backed by institutional care, I mean, not in terms of hospitals, but in terms of the institutions that they work in. So there's a lot beyond mere numbers. Right. OK, so uh, let me come back to you, uh, Dr. Sherwal. You know, as far as this entire situation is concerned, like Dr. Das Kapta was pointing out, you know, we've been in this situation for a few months now. What have our learnings been and do you believe that we are better prepared today and better prepared to give everyone care? Dr. Sherwal. Yes. Uh, you know, Dr. Das Gupta has, you know, uh, raised a very valid question, particularly uh, uh, availability of the health care and uh, treatment uh, for all uh, across, uh, you know, high or low income group or, uh, you know, uh, elderly or uh, young patient. So uh, that is really, uh, you know, uh, I'll, I'll see that uh, as far as Delhi government hospital are concerned, so I'm working there. Uh, all the protocol for the treatment which are there as per the ICMR or as per the government of India are being followed in Delhi government hospital. And uh, uh, we are giving each and every uh, treatment free of cost, irrespective of uh, their income. Uh, so all the patients are being treated free of cost. 
so that, that uh, is uh, being taken care and uh, whether it is uh, you know any type of medicine whether it is antiviral remdesivir or uh, steroid or even uh, uh, the immune booster immunity boosters so anything uh, including the food we are taking care to uh, the best uh, level and uh, uh, that is why uh, if you see the two days data uh 8593 cases uh, were there so it's really uh, touched the uh, highest number uh, today out of which uh, if you see the number of uh, beds availability uh, around 16000 beds are there and uh, if we talk about the normal beds uh, uh, total beds around 8000 are occupied in delhi government Uh, of these critical care patients, uh, I, I understand that that is a scarcity, and that has to be because usually uh, we have very limited capacity in the uh, ICUs and ICU, but still uh, we are able to manage uh, to the uh, you know level. Uh, but as the Holi is coming or other festival are coming, there may be a, you know uh, crisis, but still uh, we are. trying our best to cope up with that and right. i am hopeful that we will be able to uh, have the intake of the patients that that is as far as capacity goes that is as far as infrastructure goes dr sherwal but let's look at yeah. it from another aspect when you're talking about being better prepared you know over the last 7 or 8 months do you believe that the system itself you know and the doctors in terms of you know how to take care of these patients and those kind of aspects we are better prepared that way too yeah definitely it's uh, we we uh, we, uh, we have been trying to get the uh, uh, required manpower uh, and uh, uh, we have recently uh, uh, tried to uh, have the uh, you know nursing staff which are trained in icu care uh, care and that has been uh, done even day before yesterday we finished the training so we are uh, trying to uh, innovate in that uh, sense that basically Uh, in case uh, uh, the doctors as you know and uh, even nurses uh, are you know frankly speaking since last seven eight month there are uh, now uh, burnout that is uh, i will agree that most of the doctor are really fed up uh, because of the covid uh, it is two way one is that uh, they are doing duty uh, in the covid uh, area two they they are not able to do uh, their own specialty work so which if the surgeon is there he not able to operate if physician is there he not able to see uh, you know the, the patients other than the covid and you know that uh, we all know the covid uh, there is a fixed uh, you know uh, treatment uh, facilities which are uh, there at with protocol we all uh, follow that only thing is that uh, if the patients are sick serious they need to be taken care uh, in such a way their saturation and the um, key factors are maintain so that is more important and we are trying but definitely healthcare uh, you know facilities along with the healthcare worker that is definitely uh, a, a issue and mm. uh, we, we are really struggling for that and uh, whether it is nurses or whether it is doctor or paramedics everyone uh, uh, have uh, been doing wonderful job and sure. uh, but now they they, they are feeling uh, fatigue and tired Absolutely. So that is really Absolutely. no, no. Frontline workers, frontline warriors, such as you and your entire staff, need the credit, need you know a pat on the back, and you know how much ever we say is not enough to convey you know our thanks and gratitude for everything that you have done on the frontline as far as this pandemic is concerned. Thank you from all of us to you and to your fraternity as well for doing such a wonderful job, Dr. Das Gupta. you know if you look at uh, the pandemic and if you look at wave 3 like dr sherwal has just pointed out highest number of cases the cases are only climbing up cases are only going up but the panic does not seem to be the same as a few months ago people seem to be a little more relaxed now you know in november is, is there anything that you can put to that or is there anything or is there anything to suggest why that is so that is one and secondly is that a good or a bad thing no as the global experience shows it's not a good thing uh and and as dr sherwal very rightly uh, pointed out uh that the health services particularly those who are serving covid patients uh whether it's doctors or paramedics nursing staff 
all 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 uh, non clinical staff uh, he and his hospital serves in an area that has had in in yesterday's uh, zero survey results which is available in today's newspapers uh, had one of the highest zero surveillance rates which is around nearly 31% uh, which is the uh, in, in the shadra area uh, remember that the central district has had it at nearly 50% whereas the lowest has been the southwest district which is at about 18 to 19% so clearly all districts as far as delhi goes are certainly going to witness far more cases to come uh, the point therefore is that uh, this is this is the context in which uh, the preparation ahead has to be seen and he is spoken of fatigue of burnout and so on now it's it's quite possible that the health services itself is at a bit of an inflection point at this point and and certainly there is fatigue there's nothing to 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 deny it and it's it's best to to uh, reckon it up front at the same time the question is are we relaxing already uh, the answer certainly is yes because uh, there was and and I, and I believe that this perception continues that uh, that delhi actually did well the fact is delhi did do well uh, going by the number of uh, new cases per day because that's what is really uppermost uh, in 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 the average person's mind uh, you 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 check the daily case count in the in the morning newspaper on the or in the evening news uh, but now that it's gone above 8000 per day uh, the question therefore is did we relax early Uh, the answer is yes but more importantly was the messaging wrong uh, the answer also perhaps is yes or at the very least uh, the messaging wasn't right uh, in in insensitizing people insensitizing workplaces uh, that at, at least driven by zero surveillance data which is which is carefully crafted uh, sampled uh, you know surveys that there is a lot more to come now there's no way of predicting whether it will happen in 2 weeks or 4 weeks or 6 weeks but it's quite certain that there's a lot more to come uh, the other important point of course is that uh, and and there's something we have discussed uh, all along mm. that uh, that community engagement strategies that risk communication strategies aren't simply robust enough that the way all kinds of surveys are happening including zero surveys we just have not had behavioral surveys or surveys of uh, how how people are practicing these preventive behaviors and that that's extremely crucial and that will enable us to fine tune strategies on that front we have been fine fine tuning strategies on the hospital front on the treatment front right on 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 specific medications and so on and so forth but we all know that those interventions mm. have their own limitations in the absence of a specific me- medicine and certainly a, a vaccine which is which is you know at least at the very least is still some months ahead so the right. main main weapon which is really the preventive behavior we simply didn't have uh, we simply don't have uh, data on that and, so, and 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 the need for that data still doesn't seem to be a concern enough absolutely all right on that note then i'll call it a wrap on this edition of covid-19 india fights back Thank you to both my panelists for joining me on the program and putting things into perspective for us and as I leave we'd like to make an appeal to all our viewers like always remember these are some simple steps that you can follow wear a mask at all times whenever you step out of your homes or your offices remember to wash your hands and face regularly and follow physical distancing of at least 6 feet these small steps can go a long way in defeating the pandemic that's it from me see you again next time